The choices we make affect the lives of others around us. Even those we've never met. Choose wisely. Tin Man. That's what they call me. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. It's because I got no fing heart. understand why we're doing this job. Seventy million dollars? Seventy million dollars. Ah! That's a hell of a lot of money. With that kind of money you can buy a personality. Or a girl who won't care about it. You can complain now? The money's not good for you? Working man, you know? I had a job once. I used to work on cars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've been properly introduced. No, we haven't. My name's Abraham Ashley. People call me Ash. Hello, Abraham. Abraham Ashley. Abraham Ash. Abraham. Abraham Ashley. Ah, what's up, my Negro? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Good to see you haven't lost your charm. If he touches me, I swear to God, I'm gonna scream rape. <laughs> no one is raping anyone. It's not so bad now, is it? You come to me with a problem, right? You don't think I forgot about that loan or something, do you? You'll get the cash when the job is done. She did not tell you that the job was for $70 million? Banks control the money. How ironical is that? Banks guarantee your money. You're our only hope. Banks guarantee all commerce. I want to be called Samurai Hack. Don't wave at the enemy. <laughs> Shall we, my dear? Sun Tzu once referred to it as the divine manipulation of the threads. J. Lazarus Hawk. Welcome to the Shorts Festival presented by Last Train to Memphis Entertainment. This festival was created to help independent filmmakers get their work shown to a wider audience. 
If you are interested in entering the festival, go to the website lasttraintomemphis.com and click on the festival link. Be sure to read the rules and regulations carefully. We have received several requests to see films from previous shows. You can click on the Memphis Uncensored link on our website to see these films on the web. Our first film is Cherry Blossom, produced by Cowboy Up Productions and directed by Arnold Edwards. Cherry Blossom is a short about how all men live by an unwritten code. That code will differ from man to man, but the basics will remain the same. You do not need to know a lot about Japanese culture to understand that this film was inspired by Japanese history. Curtis, what do you got for me? know this day's coming, but you're never ready. <laughs> the, the evil that men do. Catch us up with them in the end. We all have to live by a code. <laughs> I just never thought that it would be you. <laughs> it's out of respect. <laughs> like you haven't slept in days. So what do you have for me, Gene? This is what I got. But it's the last one. You're the only one I can trust with this, Curtis. Nobody else knows about it. I don't know. The others find out about this. It's best they don't. Times have changed, Curtis. Things have. They're not how they used to be. My life is one of service. In this service, each man has a code. The specifics of that code will differ from man to man, but the basics remain the same. A man's worth is dictated by his adherence to this code. A man's ability to perform his duty determines his worth. If that man is worthy, he may be trusted. He can be relied upon to perform his service so that others may perform theirs. Disregard to any of these fundamentals of the code will compromise a man's character. A strict adherence to these principles, however, will strengthen one's resolve in this way. Not every man's code is the same. As a servant, I would perform any task asked upon me by my master, no matter how difficult the request. When a man of power 
finds himself in a world he no longer wishes to be a part of, he finds it necessary to excuse himself from that world. The evil men do catches up with them in the end. The title Cherry Blossom was selected for symbolism. Samurai wish to die in battle young and beautiful in life as a cherry blossom, which falls from a tree beautiful and young, not withered and discolored like most flora. Arnold and the cowboy up crew are hard at work putting the finishing touches on their latest project, Curbside Confessions, a feature film showcasing a lot of local Memphis talent, and we look forward to its release. Our next film was directed by David Lieben and the University of Memphis in 1997. At the time, Kiss Off was the first project of its kind to be done at the U of M. It went on to win the Bronze Award at the World Fest Flagstaff in the Performing Arts, Film, and Video category. It stars J.W. Williams and Marcy Sanders. <laughs> The thing we've got to keep in sight Could affect us for the rest of our lives Being all alone makes me feel such a fright I need your loving tonight I would tell you just how I feel I gotta know first if the feeling is real Without wide open and feeling no fear find out just how we feel that's the thing we've got to keep in sight and it just might affect us for the rest of our life I picture myself going somewhere on my way to do something very important. And everybody's poking their heads out of the windows to see what I'm up to. And I'm riding this bicycle, doing a wheelie all the way. Never two wheels touching the ground at once. Boy, I feel cool. Who cares? I care. My delusions are important. Only to you. No one cares how you picture yourself. It'd be nice if you'd care. Well, I don't. I've got an idea. Let's do something that we could do together that would be fulfilling and important. Something that would make us proud to accomplish. Like what? Get the whole gang together and put on a show? Perhaps we could start our own little newspaper. Is that the type of that you're looking for? No, too played out. We need something to entice us. If we're not excited, it's not what we're looking for. We could start a collection for the homeless, wrap a supermarket in cellophane, mow the lawn. I'm not excited. Keep going. We could exercise day and night till we were just like Sylvester Stallone and Jane Fonda. Start a business. We could sell the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. No, you're not trying. Keep going. Study Shakespeare day in and day out until we knew the stuff better than old Bill knew it. No. Make a collage with a really heavy theme. So heavy that by merely looking at it, it would define our existence on Earth. No, 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 no. That's not it. God, you're so stupid. If you're so brilliant, why don't you come up with something? All you can do is picture yourself getting there on a bike. That's really exciting, Jack. Hey. 
Don't get smart with me, Jill. You, Jack. I am smarter than you. I just love my bed. <clears throat> hey, Jack. <laughs> bigger. Jack, do you love me? What difference does it make? We spend all of our time together anyway. Yeah, but do you love me? Yes. But why did you ask me that? I don't know. It seemed important for that moment. Oh. Well, now that you mentioned it, do you love me? Why did you ask me that? You ruin all our nicest moments. You're asking me to, to expose myself, and God knows I'm no exhibitionist. Who knows what God knows? God knows what God knows. Who is God? Who are you? I'm Jack. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. That's it. We can hijack something for a good cause. A, a plane, a train, a bus, a taxi. A helicopter. We can hijack a helicopter. Oh, I like helicopters. <laughs> Give me a good cause to hijack a helicopter. Well, that's easy. There's millions of reasons to hijack a helicopter. I don't have time to hear a million reasons. Give me, let's say, three good reasons to hijack a helicopter. Okay. Uh, one. Well, let's see, there's so many to choose from, I don't know which one to choose. We can hijack a helicopter and tie a big sign to it that says, Stop Nuclear Testing. We can fly around the country till our cause is met. That is stupid. They shoot us down? Maybe. But at least we get a chance to fly around in a helicopter. Give me two more reasons. We get public attention. Who wants public attention? It could be profitable. You know, Nabisco would pay us, I don't know, a million dollars to hang their logo outside of our window. And when we got out of jail, we could write a book that says, Hijacking can be profitable. You know, the New York Times loves those kind of books. Jack, forget the hijacking already. That idea is nowhere. You hate all my ideas. Jack? Yeah. I love you. Big deal. I've been thinking about digging down, down into the ground. Wondering what I'm getting out of, what I found. I've been thinking, I'm of the mind to see what else. I'm starving. Isn't this place swell? Swell? Oh no, you did not say the word swell. Swell is a word used to describe sacks of pus. Sacks of pus often swell. I just meant I like the place for Pete's sake. What are you gonna order? Order? Me order? I have no idea. Will you stop rushing me? I'll tell you as soon as I made my decision. I'll have the barbecue wings. I think I'll have the veggie burger. Mmm, swell. Hi, are you ready to order now? Yes. Could you tell me what's in the veggie burger? I mean, I know it's some kind of vegetables, but mm -hmm. I'd like to know exactly what kind of vegetables. Well, it's a great sandwich, and it comes with zucchini, eggplant, and squash. Boy, is it good. 
I'll try that. Mm -hmm. Only, could you hold the squash? I'm afraid we can't do that because it's already pre-made and we can't take the squash out. Whatever, you haven't made me happy. I'll take the veggie burger with the squash. Okay, one Thank you veggie so much. burger with the squash. Thank you. And what would you like to order today? <clears throat> I'll add the barbecue wings with the side order of pus. Hot and spicy or good old American? Plain old pus should suffice, but thank you though. Thank you very much. I'll be back when it's ready. Jack, why am I always so miserable? Because you can't think of anything important to do. If you did have something important to do, you could escape the misery. You can't think of anything important to do. Why aren't you miserable? Who said I wasn't miserable? You don't look miserable. Well, see, now you're just saying that because you want to think that you're more miserable than I am. The truth is, I'm more miserable than you. I just don't make it known. You're happiest when you're miserable. You're miserable when you're happy. Eat. I ordered pus. Jack, I was thinking. Oh. I don't think we should see each other as much. Well then, look the other way. No, seriously. I need more time to myself. I've decided to take some night classes in macrobiotics. I figured that if I kept myself busy at something I found important, I wouldn't be quite so unhappy. You'd be lonely. And loneliness is just another form of misery. Yeah, but it's time to move on in life. Time for the next phase of misery. I could, I could take those classes too. I don't want you to take those classes. You see, I want to know things you don't know. I want to feel smarter than you, superior, a much better person. I want you to come beg me to teach you about macrobiotics. This way I can say, you Jack, you're so stupid, you don't know anything. That's when you'll start to grovel. You'll constantly be pestering me until I decide to teach you something. And I'll tell you the wrong thing so you'll be misinformed. This way, everyone else will think you're stupid, too. Can we still have sex? Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. Well, then it's okay. Here we are, the veggie burger with squash and the barbecued wings with the pus. Enjoy. It's been a pleasure serving you. Oh, and feel free to do something irritating if you'd like to get my attention. I'll be around somewhere. Thank you. <coughs> I think I'll get a dog. You know, there's no better feeling than to have a loyal companion. You know, one that will love me regardless of my actions. Yeah, I could kick him in the head, but he still want to be right there next to me. Not that I do that, but you get the point. Wolf. Yeah, I'd be going to bed, and he'd be want he'd be wanting to be there right there next to me. He has to be away from me, you know. You don't even have a dog yet. Oh, but I know how it'll be. See, you want to play with him, and I'll say, you. Get away from that dog. You're late for class. I hate dogs. I'll teach him to attack you. <laughs> then you have a right to hate him. I'll hit it with a bat. I'll slaughter your professors. Fair is fair. Do you remember what we were doing when we first met? No. You don't? No. How could you forget? I didn't forget. I just never remembered. Okay, I'll give you a clue. I was wearing my favorite sweater. Like I have any idea what your favorite sweater is. I can't believe you considering I wear it all the time. You know, the black one. First clue is useless. Give me another one. Okay. I was also wearing my favorite boots. Give me a break. I don't keep track of your wardrobe. I remember your wardrobe right down to the stains. You would. Okay. 
Here's a clue having nothing to do with clothes. Oh, goody. We were playing pool. Oh, now I remember you're wearing your favorite boots and sweater. Right. Those times were really good, weren't they? I think I'm gonna be sick. You want some pus? Hey, did you know that a guy named Chuck Yeager was the first man to break the sound barrier? What did he break it with? What do you mean, what did he break it with? Why an airplane, of course. Why an airplane, of course? Well, he did. See, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. You know, with his mastery of machinery, he achieved a great goal. He went out in the world knowing what it is he wanted to do, and he did it. It was important to him. Boy, I wish I was Chuck Yeager. So do I. Hey, don't start with me, okay? Jack, what's going to happen to us if we can never think of something important to do? Nothing. Nothing at all. And that's the problem. And I think that's the way it's going to be because I can't think of anything. No, I can't accept that. There's got to be something out there. I mean, if you can't come up with something, I will, all right? It, it's just floating around in space. I just have to figure out how to tap into it. Good luck. Honestly mean that, too. But I want you to know something. I am sick and tired of sitting around here and waiting for that something to happen. Let's get out of here. Let's go do something. Like what? I don't know. How about a movie? No, I don't think I could sit there and watch somebody be creative while my own creativity sits dormant. Let's go get something to eat then. Please, not that again. Let's go for a walk. Where would we walk to? Does it matter? Just anything to get us out of this apartment, please? I can't walk without a destination. I need to feel like I have some place to go, otherwise there's no reason to walk. Let's go get some candy. I don't want candy. Not even a giant box of goobers? Goobers? Mm -hmm. I like goobers. Yes, Jack. I know you do. You know, anything in the world could happen to us. Anything could happen. We'd find ourselves in the middle of something very important. Totally spontaneous. This is getting exciting. Yeah, so let's go. Nah, I don't feel like it. You know what you are? I'll tell you what you are. You are a f***ing tease. That's what you are. You sit there and you get us both excited and then you slam your face in that book. Do that again and I'll kill you. Okay. Hey, where are you going? To get myself a nice big giant box of goobers. I bet she won't save me any. She'll stuff her face so full just to make sure I won't have any. What the Why she have to leave? Don't you know I need her?
Did you save me any goobers? I have lots of them. See? Can I have some? What's the magic word? Wrong! What's the magic word? Better give me some goobers, Joe. Does violence make you feel important, Jack? Oh, cut it out, Jack. You can have some goobers. I can? Mm-hmm. Come sit next to me. magic word. Again with this magic word business. How am I supposed to know what it is? We never discussed that before. Tough luck. No goobers for Jack. Give me a clue. No goobers for Jack. Please give me a clue. You just said it. What'd I say? The magic word. Which word was it? No goobers for Jack. Give me some goobers! You said it to the word! Yes, but you have to isolate the word. You have to make it clear to me you understand which word it is, or no goobers for Jack. What does it rhyme with? T's. C's. No goobers for Jack. Knees. No goobers for Jack. Keys. No goobers for Jack. Trees. No goobers for Jack. Please. Have some goobers, Jack. I don't understand how you expect me to know that. You've got your goobers, so shut up about it. You know, when I was tearing up the apartment, I felt somewhat content. Oh, really? I'll have to try it sometime. Maybe that's my calling in life. To go around the countryside and tear people's apartments. Doesn't seem very important, though. Here we go again. Then why don't you come up with something important?
All right. I'm going to have a baby. Is that important? I guess it depends on who you ask. But I think it's very important. Probably too important for us. It's always something. Kiss me. The thing we got to keep in sight could affect us for the rest of our lives. Being all alone makes me feel such a fright. I need your loving tonight. I would tell you just how I feel. I gotta know first if the feeling is real. With our eyes wide open and feeling no fear. There's just one thing we've got to keep in sight. And it just might affect us for the rest of our lives. Kiss Off was originally rehearsed like a play and then added the blocking for cameras at a later time. Director David Lieben is now a film professor at the University of Denver. JW, who played Jack, has gone on to act in Walk the Line, My Blueberry Nights, and recently Deja Vu. Our next film was directed by Arnita Williams and produced by Be About It Pictures. In an Instant tells the story of a close-knit family as they all become suspects in the mysterious death of a twin sister's pro ball playing husband. Was his death an accident or a planned incident? Suspense, drama, mystery, deception, and murder. Here we have In an Instant. Let me introduce you to my family, the Cook family. We're very close. We always exemplify genuine hospitality. There's nothing we wouldn't do for each other. When you mess with one of us, you're messing with the whole clan. But my husband, Devin, he doesn't quite fit in. He's what I call hellacious. What is this? What you doing on my cell phone? Look, I just came home to relax after having a rough day. And then I hear all this beep, beep, beep on this phone. So I go to Silas and this message pops up. I don't know any Tiffany. That could be anybody. That's somebody playing on the phone. Ain't nobody playing on the phone and playing games but you. And I'm tired of your... Who's this Tiffany girl? This ain't the first time I done heard something about her. Look, man, nobody. We done been through this. Oh, this. And I'm sick of you. Damn, you fucking that monkey? Get in my. You hear me? You still.
in business, you hear me? Now, it's the last time I'm gonna tell you. Stay out of my business, you hear me? Huh? Is Ron here? He's working late. Never mind him. What the hell is going on? Devin, he has drawn the line. He drew the line with me a long time ago. What did that fool do this time? He left his cell phone on the nightstand and a text message came through. Test positive, hope it's a boy. I went to confront him about it and it turned into an argument. And he went into a rage and he grabbed my neck and dragged me into the bedroom. What the hell? Chris, I'm sore. Bruised. He bit me and pulled plugs out of my hair. Then he just drove off. Tara, stop. I don't want to hear anymore. Hear what anymore? Baby, I thought you weren't coming home for another hour or so. Well, baby, I started missing you and feeling guilty, and I just wanted to come home and see you. Is that all right? Oh, that's so sweet. Now, Chris, what is it you don't want to hear anymore? It's Devin again. I knew it. They got into a fight and he got some girl pregnant, that bastard. You filed a report? What about the hospital? No. No, I don't want anyone to know. It's just a few minor cuts and bruises. But I don't want to go back there. Not right now. Well, mi casa su casa. That's not even an issue. You know you can stay here. Have you told mom and dad yet? No, I don't want them to be worried. Mom has enough going on. She just got out of the hospital and she's dealing with that spot on her lungs and, and dad is just like a zombie since grandma died. Kyra, you can't keep protecting him. You gotta tell mom and dad sooner or later. Look, we love you and we'll always be here for you. You remember that, okay? I love you too. for me and your dad. We've been gone all day and we didn't want to stop and get any fast food. What you doing? Uh, Kyra's over here. You guys trying to get together without me? No. Uh, Mom, can you and dad come on over here right now? Because Kyra's not doing so good. What's wrong? What's wrong with Kyra? Glenda, who is that you're talking to? What's going on? Who's that you're talking to? I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. What? What's Robert, going? get your shoes on. We gotta get over to Chris's house right away. Get your shoes on. Come on, let's go now. Something happened to Carol. Are you all right? monster messing with my baby. He doesn't deserve to live. I'm worried about a thing, Dad, is you? Get on your knees. Now pray. Say it. Our Father. Our Father. Help this wretched, disgusting soul. Help this wretch. I deserve to die. What's up? You know what's up. Hey, I mean, what you coming at me with this?
And you don't hear me calling you walking a tight rope, man. Yeah, I know about you making a pass at Chris. I'd have slapped the taste out of your mouth. Hey, look, dog. I'm married. I got a wife. Marriage is just another game you're playing, man. Kyra's ashamed to call your husband. Look, let me tell you something, dog. You stay the f out of my business and you get you some. How about that? Huh? Come on. Let me give you some words of wisdom. If you enjoy the luxuries of life, like walking, Damn. talking, Damn. and breathing, uh, stay away from my wife. And another thing, I suggest you get back to playing your game before you have to move back to North Memphis. Your contract is up. And I've seen how you've been playing lately. Sad. for a ringtone? Yeah, I like them. It makes me not want to answer the phone. Yeah, they're pretty tight. <clears throat> Let it go to voicemail. Um, no, I need to get this, uh, oh, it's Devin. I gotta take this. I gotta go. I, I, I gotta go, okay? Wait, Just hold this Hold on, hold on. I'll take that's, you. That's Extra, 
you know, so you can buy your mom something really nice. Or you can go out shopping with your girlfriend or something. Okay. Oh. It is not about the money or the shopping. I wanted this baby and I thought you did too. I cannot believe I've been so stupid to fall in love with someone like you. You know what? This baby does not deserve to die. You do. Devin was never down too long. When he needed a pick-me-up, he'd just go to his favorite spot, the Green Beetle. No mistake about it, Devin loved women. All kinds, as long as they were pretty. Black women, Latino, Indian, Asian. And just like his soon-to-be baby's mama, white women. I'm Tanya. I'm Kelly. I'm Stacy. I'm Michelle. And his favorite pickup line? Hi, I'm Devin. I play pro ball. You want a ball with a baller? But little does Devin know, he's on his way out. We thought Devin died of a heart attack, but the coroner's report says different. He was poisoned. So the next question that leads us to, who did it? Was it Tiffany, his mistress? We all know she wanted to be with him. She wanted to bear his firstborn. Or was it Chris, my twin sister? She loathed Devin. Or was it mom? Kara was her baby. She just wasn't having that. Or was it Ron? No real man allowed some jerk to make passes at his wife. Or maybe it was dad. Dad didn't play that about his baby girl. Or was it me? Anita Williams is further developing the feature length screenplay for In an Instant and is also working in co-producing an action suspense screenplay by screenwriter director Vincent Moore and directing a martial arts action short based off of a comic book created and written by Marthias Wade. Thank you for joining us for the monthly shorts festival. Once again, if you would like to submit a film, go to the last train to memphis.com and click on the festival link. If you have a band or a song you would like to hear on the ending credits, Look for a separate section on the rules labeled musicians and send us a CD. To close the show tonight, we have Save Our Soul, performed by Free World and featuring the voice of James Govan. Also, check out the bonus films after the credits, including one by my partner in art, Sharon Jones. 
Thank you for joining us, and remember, support local film and keep independent film alive. Ooh.